So do I miss competing? If you asked me that the few years after I retired, I would have said yes. And final boss takes the game. They go down, the dynasty of all dynasties right there. I think he's gonna go down in history as the greatest console player of all time. And it looks like Ogre 2 doesn't even realize what he just did winning the last three tournaments. Ogre 2 is the greatest console esports player to ever play any game here. You're talking about the epitome of a true legend. My name is Tom Ryan. I used to compete in Halo as Ogre 2, and uh, now I'm the general manager for the Florida Mutineers. When I did on that floor, I was three, not uh, I had a really great childhood. Uh, I grew up in the suburbs and had a lot of neighborhood friends that we would play with. I grew up playing sports. My, my twin brother and I were very into soccer. We traveled all over the country for soccer. This was before Halo kicked in. Uh, we were always an active family. Uh, we had four kids only four years apart. Tom has an older brother, a twin brother, and a younger sister, so. And how was the relationship between the twins? It's almost inseparable. Dan is a slightly more assertive personality, I guess, and Tom was qu quiet at the time, but he's really not anymore, you know? Growing up, they did almost everything together. They have really similar interests. They had a lot of the same friends, and really until until Dan moved to Australia in their early to mid 20s like they hadn't really spent a significant time apart for us it, like we always had kind of like our best friend or or a really close friend that was had similar interests same exact age always available to do things and stuff and like I, I've got a son now he's you know we just got the one and I just sometimes I think like you know if he had a twin like how awesome his his life would be and it makes me realize that, that I really was lucky to have a twin with my twin brother, uh, my relationship's great. Um, you know, obviously, he's been living in Australia for the last 11, 12 years. Uh, so we only see each other in person probably once a year max, but we still talk or text daily. And the time difference makes it tough, but uh, we still find time to game from time to time, you know, a couple days a week, if possible, uh, for a few hours. Dude, you suck. You just missed two rockets on him. They're back. Oh, You're trash. Oh. So uh, it is a long story, but Halo, Halo was kind of a love at first sight. We grew up playing Nintendo mostly. Uh, we had a friend on our school bus in freshman year of high school that had gotten the Xbox right when it came out. And so we, we hadn't heard of Halo or played Halo, but he was raving about how good Halo was. And we, we had played a lot of like uh, 007 and Perfect Dark, uh, other shooter games on the Nintendo 64. So we, we liked games like that. Uh, and there wasn't anything like that for the GameCube. So. He's like, oh, I'll come over to my house and try it out. And we got a couple other guys from the school bus, a couple local friends, and we started playing Halo at his house. And then we're like, we love this game. And so we went back and we ended up buying an Xbox like a few weeks later, yada, yada, yada. It was love at first sight. And we also were really good at it. And that was kind of like, we were at the age where we were very competitive with everything. So we see this Halo and, you know, someone shows us that you, you can actually link up two Xboxes with a cable. This was crazy back then. And you could play it like in the other room and on a different TV and no one can screen peek. And it was like the best thing in the world for us, so. Uh, it helped that we had a lot of very good competitive close friends from our hometown. So we actually had a really good pocket of talent uh, to, to land with and get good with. Ogre 1 and Ogre 2, uh, the gamer tags, you know, we played on Xbox Connect originally before Xbox Live. And when you made an account, it just had like maybe 30 different like pictures, like, like just art pictures um, as avatars that you could select. And we were just flipping through like, oh, that's lame, that's lame, that's lame. And then we found this one, it was like a giant ogre. Oh, there's a really cool looking ogre guy. And then we just started playing as the ogres then. And so like, it kind of just stuck. He's number one because he's born first. I'm number two because I'm twice as good. You know, that's what I always said. <laughs> so it was a, a little different for us back then when we decided to compete in tournaments is a tough question because there weren't tournaments. We were playing the game getting good at it just locally with our friends and then we heard about oh someone's holding a tournament they came up and said hey there's a tournament at ohio university which is not far from us can we go to the tournament i'm like what they have tournaments our older brother had some friends that were going to school there 
And I think like a couple guys showed up from like Indiana, Michigan. So it wasn't just people from Ohio University, but there was like 30 teams and we just smoked everybody. And uh, we were just like, holy crap, like, are we like the best of this game? A month later, we heard about another tournament that was going to happen. So the Halo 50K tournament was the first, like, I would say national level one, because there were people from all over the country that came, uh, that we drove down to in Atlanta. You know, you hear about pockets of talent, like all oh, these guys are coming down from New York. And then there was like a couple guys that came from California for that one. During this time, I guess there had been a couple other pretty big tournaments before, and there was some team, TDT, the dream team that was like, unbeatable the best guys uh, and we lost a close match to them but my brother and I were doing really well individually we knew we could beat them uh, and then there was a side tournament that was two versus two and my brother and I smoked those guys both sets of them so uh, everyone there was kind of shocked they're like wow they're, these guys are insane like they're beating the guys that have been winning the last few and then we came out the next tournament swapped out a teammate and and beat those guys in the four versus four it progressed slowly over time. Uh, two, this was 2003 to 2004 was like kind of very much more grassroots. I think it was around 2006, MLG announced a new like television deal and they had a lot more prize money. So the prize money jumped a lot and we were freshman year in college, like 2005, 2006. And we had a sit down talk with our parents and we're like, if we keep winning everything like we have been the last two years, it's like we could make like $60,000. Wouldn't have been our preference, but again, it was hard to say no if you're playing at that level. Yeah, the so. video game stuff was blooming and they were at the forefront of it, why not? You know, They were like, well, okay, fine, if you want to take some time off, as long as you promise to go back and finish school later, which is a whole separate story. Because uh, no one knew how long that would last. We were like, is this a one-year thing? We don't know, but they were supportive. They let us take time off school. And I would say 2006 is when we first were like, maybe not a long-term career, but we were like, we want to do this full-time uh, and there's a lot of prize money and, you know, glory up for grabs. The house that the boys grew up in, we had a partially finished basement and they would do their gaming down there. Boys would ring the doorbell on Friday night, and I'd look out and there'd be two or three guys out there holding a TV. You know, throughout Halo, our house was like the land house, uh, and that's because our parents, they were okay with having neighborhood friends over, you know, that growing up it was always like that. All the kids would come over and they would just knock on the door, we'd let them in, and we'd have like four or five friends over all the time, just running around our house. It was like the, the hub house of the, of the, the street that we lived on. Uh, teams would like to come to our house to practice. We had a lot of guys in our basement uh, for several years. We used to put all our big checks when we win them at the tournaments, you know, you hold the big check. We had them all like mounted along like all the walls in the basement. You know, upwards of like 30, 30 kids from a couple different states coming there for like a week at a time just sleeping in their basement. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty crazy, but our house was the land house. Everybody came over to our house from all over the country is what it turned into. Let's talk about your personal life. What personal life? <laughs> I didn't think about it much at the time, obviously, but um, my girlfriend at the time played Halo. Uh, all of my close friends throughout my life and my teenage and adult life played Halo. <laughs> so it's, it's very much a case where they intertwined our friends from high school that I became closest friends with. Like I the people I would look back and say, those were my friends. They were all the guys that would come over and land Halo 1 and 2 with us. Uh, so they all played Halo. <laughs> so it was really just a scenario where I just developed friends in the passion that I had. I, I don't know if I could talk too much about like winning. I, I think, you know, that's just kind of something that like I just, I got lucky in my formula of how I approach things and whatever, it works out. And I obviously had the talent which I didn't know at the time originally. So our longest winning streak was 2006, 2005 through 2006, which was Halo 2 with my brother Walshy and Saiyan. Me and my brother and Walshy teamed for like six or seven years uh, from Halo, end of Halo 1 through all of Halo 2, early Halo 3. But that Halo 2 era was our most dominant for sure. When my brother decided to retire, that was definitely a tough period. Um, Obviously, at the time, I would have preferred that he didn't retire. He was still good. Uh, he had a long-distance girlfriend at the time, which was the main factor. 
who he's now married to. They've been together for like 13 years. They had been dating long distance for like over a year and he didn't, wasn't having fun competing anymore. 2008, we weren't winning anymore. We were getting like top four, like third, fourth a lot, missing the finals. And he finally said, you know what? I'm, I'm ready to move on. And he said, I'm, I'm just gonna move to Australia. So that, that was hard on the whole family. Tom doesn't talk about it, but it had to be hardest on him because they're so close. It, it wasn't a surprise. It was a long time coming. It was something that Dan really wanted to do. But it was kind of a big deal. It was kind of bittersweet because it really was. Um, Dan was moving to the opposite side of the world and it was sad to see him move away so far. It was a tough period. And 2009 was my worst season ever. Uh, and that was right after my brother retired. I did have some pretty dominant eras with Pistola. Pistola is obviously much different than my brother. He's much younger. He was like entering his prime. He was like 18 at the time when we got him. He very much became kind of a little brother at the time. I was much older than he was, seven or eight years older. But yeah, getting him was like, he did become kind of a replacement for my brother in a sense. I teamed with Pistola for the next like three years straight. End of 2010 where we won the last three straight. Then the next year, 2011, Halo Reach came out and me and Pistola went and teamed with Roy and Lunchbox. But we stayed together, the two of us stayed together and we we were like the most dominant team that whole year. We won the national championship again. Uh, yeah, there was like a good two and a half year period where me and Pistola were, were running it as well, which was not quite as dominant as the earlier days with uh, our final boss team, but pretty cool times. I don't think it was any surprise to me that he was looking to retire for a while or, or you know, considering the possibility. It had kind of run its course and he had, maybe his flame kind of finally dwindled a bit and the passion wasn't there and other things in his life were, you know, outweighing, you know, still competing. So I love it here. Mutineers, you know, I am a mutineer now. You know, I just love the competition side of it and it's a, the perfect job for me because I love being involved in that. <laughs> so do I miss competing? If you asked me that the few years after I retired, I would have said yes. There was always the itch to come back. I still felt like I was, you know, good enough. I would say the longer I've not competed, I'm very much over it. There was a lot of added stress to that, especially as you get older and you're doing it as a job. It's like you need to perform, you need to be winning. You know, versus early days, I was just doing it for fun. Even if I wasn't winning, I would have been going to tournaments. But I will say watching a team that you are invested in is a lot more stressful than actually when I was competing. When I was competing, I never used to think about it, you know, never got nervous. You get up on stage and you're like, once the game starts, you're just locked in. It's like the same thing you do every day. You love it. I'm going to go beat these guys. Watching, it's like you're completely out of control. You can't even talk to them between games. Sometimes I'll go up and tell the coach, like, go tell them to do this, you know, like, as if, as if that's making a difference. I don't know if it is, but I would say my heart races way more now than it ever did competing. I still game a lot. I'm a gamer at heart. I play a lot of, I play whatever I want now. So I, gaming is now back to a relaxing time you know, and it's nice to have a personal life. <laughs>